Hey, it's Holly. In today's video, I am doing sort of the second part of the last video. So in the last video, we made a mold. I tried it out. I learned some things. I've made some changes. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's pop some resin into this and work through the kinks. Let's get started. Okay, so I am going to dub over this whole video because if I didn't, it would probably be three hours. So what you're looking at here is me demolding a resin pour from the mold we made in the last video. Now, I am going to show the process from start to finish, but I will say that this didn't go well, so I'm showing you where it went wrong. So if you look at this figure, you can see that there's a lot of air bubbles at the hip. She's missing one of her pigtails there. And basically they didn't turn out super great. Now, this was my second or maybe third batch using this mold, but each one was kind of a spectacular fail. So there are some pieces like the feet, honestly, they didn't turn out too bad. They still retained some of their shape they probably would work but they weren't kind of up to my standard of <laughs> where i wanted them to be um so when you demold the resin just what you're seeing here um anything that kind of leaks out the sides it's really easy to just peel it off so you can literally peel it off with your hands or um sometimes i'll take tweezers and peel it off with tweezers but really easy to work with this and manipulate it but these are some of the feet that were in that mold. So you can see that they're not too bad, but they're not perfect. Um, so I was kind of upset by that. And sometimes you kind of have to clean them up a bit before you can decide if they're perfect or not. But I was getting frustrated with these just because the whole point is obviously they'll have to fit into a compact. So looking at them, you know, the joint looks good. A lot of that stuff looks good. But the front of this one, there was like a bit of the shoe was off. Like it was not aligned properly. So those weren't going to work for me. Unfortunately, these ones didn't turn out as planned. So... This is where I decided, you know what, we are going to change up our design altogether because these aren't really working. So this is the point where I'm just showing you some of the other ones I made. And again, same problems, right? We're just getting air trapped. Now, thank you to everyone that left comments on the last video just explaining that I needed more air vents. I actually did punch a bunch of extra air vents into this mold when I did future castings. Um, so the one I just showed you actually had a bunch of air vents in it, but they just weren't sufficient. They just weren't either lined up properly or who knows, there's a lot of places they could have gone wrong here, but I did use air vents. So these ones here were the second casting I just did. So you can see they have arms. <laughs> That's an important point. Um, the first batch I did didn't have arms and I achieved the arms by punching more holes. So unfortunately though, the way I designed this mold, it was really difficult to line it up properly. So I decided to go back to the drawing board and create an entirely new mold. Now, I didn't film this whole process, but I did take pictures. So this is the new mold I made using lots of little tiny pieces of toothpicks to create air vents. And I pushed them into the clay so that I didn't have to worry about trying to glue them. And you can see I made lots of air vents, even for Tina's pigtails. And this just really allowed me to have a lot more control over the process. So this next video you're looking at is pouring the silicone into the mold. So once I had all of those toothpicks lined up, I then went ahead and poured some silicone on top. 
And then once this was done, it had to sit for just a little over 30 minutes to properly cure so that I could move on to the next step here. So at this point, now we had one side done, we put it back in the mold and knowing that silicone will stick to silicone, I didn't spray it like I did in the previous video. And that meant that we could basically make one big silicone block, but I left the toothpicks in so that we would still get our little air channels. So if I had sprayed it with the mold release, which is what I did in the previous video, um, then it wouldn't have stuck together and I really wanted it to stick together. And that way, now that I demolded it, it's really one piece. Um, you can see there's a few little cracks here and there, but that's not actually a problem. But the other side, those are only <laughs> little toothpick ends. So those are the air channels. Now it was super satisfying to pull those out. Um, and you can see here that I have pulled them out. Um, I just used some pliers to do that basically. And now I'm going in with an X-Acto knife and I'm cutting in from the side and I'm making irregular cuts. I'm doing that on purpose because you want to create a bit of an irregular shape so that it'll line up a lot better and that way you're going to have better castings. The problem with using the mold release in the previous mold is that it made the mold completely flat and then I had a hard time lining everything up so I think that's part of where I went wrong with the mold we made in the last video is that it was too smooth and that actually creates a lot of room for error so I'm going to speed through a bunch of this but effectively I am just cutting free the figures pulling them out one by one and I'm making again just jagged cuts right across this whole block that I have made out of silicone. So I am going to be filling eventually through those top holes, but you can see I got Titch Free, that's his name. I don't know, I've never heard of anyone called that, but that's his name. And uh, once I've got it cut from the side, I'm going to speed through this quite a bit faster because this took quite a bit of time but then cutting and getting each of the figures free. So I had, if you caught it in the previous um, clips I was showing there, I had, I believe, five figures, so five characters, and then I did six sets of feet. And here you can see me just working through this. Um, difficult to do. This one, I was able to do this by myself, but um, in some of the videos I watched on YouTube to try to <laughs> figure out where I was going wrong, I did notice that a lot of people had help when they did this, um, but this piece is small enough that I can manage it all with, with my hand. So the advice in the other videos was to get help, and I was all prepared to do that and then realized that I actually didn't need that. So the hardest part here was really making sure that you were making the right cuts because um, that's hard to do. Um, to make sure that you're cutting in the right place to free each piece. And again, the inside just looks like a hot mess because I'm making irregular cuts. So the whole thing <laughs> really is ugly at the end of the day but it gets the job done. And you'll see that as we get into the resin pouring stage, but I'm just about clear all of the pieces here. And now that we've got that last piece coming out, I'm going to show you the inside of the mold. As you can see, this was a little bit of a struggle. Okay, so these were my original pieces, just so that you can see. They came out nice and clean. They're not damaged or anything, just as they were in the molds originally. Um, doesn't wear on their faces or anything like that, at least 
I'm not doing it enough that it would cause a problem. But here's what the inside looks like. It's really <laughs> rough in there. But when I squeeze it, you can see that it, it lines up really beautifully. It just sandwiches together. And that is what is ultimately going to give us the best kind of seal. So in order for me to pour resin in this, I had to be a bit creative because I tried putting an elastic around it and then the whole thing bowed because the silicone is so soft that it just kind of curled into a C-shape. So what you see me doing here is taking um, some tongue depressors. I mean, you could also use popsicle sticks. I am wrapping them in packing tape just because then the resin won't stick to it just to give it a little bit of a non-stick surface. MacGyvering that to the sides and then I am using elastic bands around that and that's just to help prevent the silicone from kind of curling around and this helped so much so much um, and then I'm just making sure that it looks like it's nice and squished together that everything is closed up and that there's no gaping or anything so you can see that seam comes together really beautifully as if I'd never cut it in the first place. So we are ready to start the resin. So I am using, uh, once again, Smooth On brand. This is called Smoothcast 321. This is, they make a bunch of different resins, but this is the one I'm using. Um, it just uses, much like the silicone, equal parts of A and B. So you mix the two parts together, it starts a chemical reaction. As you saw there, seven to nine minutes pot life, 30 minutes cure time. So that means I have seven to nine minutes to work with it before it starts to harden, um, which you can get ones that are longer or shorter. I just feel like that is an amount of time that I can handle. So there's part A and part B. Now I brought back in um, the old mold here and I, I have the old one there just to compare the two, um, but the clip you saw previously was actually from after this. So I had poured that mold just so that I could show you what that live result looked like. Um, so I am pouring both here, but you've already seen the original results. So again, just equal parts of A and B. And once these two start to make contact with each other, I am going to immediately have that chemical reaction happening and I then have approximately seven minutes before <laughs> I have to stop working with it. So you don't need to use a scale. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm just using a scale because I find it easier to manage. Um, if you had a cup that had measurements on the side, they do have plastic cups you can get specifically for this that have measurements. I'm using such a small amount of resin that really I don't find that that's helpful for me and that's why I've been using the scale. So just trying to keep my area clean here. This is the, uh, the problem with this stuff is it's super messy. So once I've got one part in there, we are going to add an equal amount of the second part and then I'm going to be stirring that all together. But as you can see, this whole process takes quite a bit of patience. And again, you likely won't get the result that you're looking for on the first try because there is a lot of trial and error here, but also there's a bit of a learning curve as I hope you can see from my videos going through this process. So um, this process now that I've got these two together, again, I have a short period of time that I can work with this. So I'm gonna get this all mixed up. Okay, so now it's looking pretty good, all mixed together. You can see on the left, I have a syringe. Um, so because I'm going to be filling really tiny holes here, I've just decided to use a syringe, which 
I purchased from the same place that sells all of the supplies, so I figured I'm probably not super far off trying this. Um, and I'm just trying to not get bubbles into this. I'm drawing up the resin mixture. And then the thing on the left is um, not like totally a needle. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like a catheter. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, but effectively, there it, it is sharp, um, but it's more like a straw. And then I'm just, with some gentle pressure, going into those holes um, and trying to fill that up as best I can. So at this point, I'm just trying to get out any air bubbles just by kind of squeezing and rotating and tapping this and then we're just gonna let them cure. So I have, this is very sped up. This is sped up 4,500%. <laughs> um, just so that you can see what the process looks like as it cures. So initially it starts out almost kind of like a translucent kind of golden yellow color. And then very quickly it starts to become more opaque and it turns, this this particular resin turns an off-white color, so it's not completely white, but still has like a, a hint of yellow to it. Um, so this process that you're watching that's sped up, it was a little over 30 minutes, and uh, it's still fairly soft at that point, but it's firm enough that you can demold it um, without causing too much harm to the ultimate result. So um, if you were to leave this in there longer, it would just harden even more, um, but it can still continue to harden once it's demolded. You just want to make sure you're not doing that before the cure time. So then here I'm just making sure that it actually seems hardened enough that I feel safe peeling it out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. So just removing all of the elastics and all of the excess resin that kind of spilled out the sides as I sort of push those bubbles out. Now, I will say, um, and as you can see as I do this actually, some of those strings coming out of it, those are the air vents, right? So those ultimately will not be on the figure. This didn't fully turn out the way I had hoped. Um, but you kind of have to learn how the mold works. The good news is that I did get some very successful pieces in here. So as I open this up, I'm just kind of looking around to see <laughs> if anything was successful. And I can see immediately that a lot of the feet actually didn't get enough resin in them. So the feet were just kind of all around a fail. Some of the figures also I didn't get enough resin in there. Oops. <laughs> but there are a few pieces that were quite remarkable. Um, and then again, these little strings that I'm pulling out, that those are just our air vents. So that's where the excess air was escaping. But you can see that that whole side didn't totally work out on the first try. Here's the good news, though. I got two very solid characters, um, a Polly and a Midge, out of this particular casting. And oh my gosh, they are by far the best that I've made so far. And not only that, um, in my opinion, they're perfect. Now this Polly, you'll see, she has a little gray spot on her and that was a little bit of clay that was left in the mold, um, but she's pulled it out. So any following Polly's that I cast will not have spots on her but she turned out so amazing and then just check out this midge unbelievable so again all of that extra kind of fuzz hanging off the side I can pull that off with tweezers that's no big deal the face is smooth all of the detail of the hair came through it was just so successful okay so <laughs> I honestly I am so proud of this um this is unreal to me how 
detailed she came out like that's unbelievable it is amazing um so I feel like I can just work through some of the trial and error of it now but that I've kind of figured the process out which is amazing because now I can take this run with it and let my creativity take over so I really look forward to sharing my hopefully completed project soon in the next few weeks with you. I'm going to be working like mad on it. Um, but this, honestly, this has made my month. I am so excited to get rolling with these. So let me know in the comments. Um, how do you feel about that process? It's a lot of work and it's a lot of, to be honest, just like engineering, trying to figure everything out. But I am very happy with that result. <coughs> if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please hit the subscribe button. It helps out the channel so much. If you're on social media, come follow along on social media. I now have three social media accounts, um, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So uh, if you just look up Pocket Vintage Toys on any of them, you'll find me. That's the best way to connect with me outside of YouTube. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.